Yeah, so let's get started. So Bobby just uh, talked about standard library. So let's go into more detail about how we can use resources on Gem5 resources into our simulations. So first, let's start with what are Gem5 resources. So Gem5 resources are pre-built artifacts that you can directly plug into your simulation and use them as is. So each Gem5 resource is, is separated into 13 different categories, such as like binaries, kernels, disk images, and are also separated by ISAs, like ARM, x86, RISC-V. So let's uh, see what categories that we have. So here are all the categories, all the types of resources that we have. Like we have workloads, which are a bundle of one or more resources, which with preset parameters that you can directly run. An example of it would be like booting a full system Ubuntu, uh, yeah, to boot full system Ubuntu with like a preset kernel and a disk image. We have, as, as I just talked, we have disk images, we have binaries which are pre-compiled programs which you can directly run. We have kernels, we have checkpoints and sim points for which you can have a snapshot of your simulation and resume that at a later point in time. We have bootloaders, we have a simple file resource, like if you just need to use a file in a simulation. So those are the types of resources that we have on Gem5. Apart from that, Gem5 resources website is also an easy way where you can search for resources. So here you can, if you know what type of resources you want, let's say I want an Ubuntu boot workload, I can directly search, search for it. And then you can specify what uh, ISA you want it for. Let's say I want it for RISC-V. So we can directly filter through and search via the website. You can also, when you open the resource, you get its property. So if it's a workload, you get what resources are in the workload. So you can see this, uh, that workload now uses an Ubuntu 22.04 image. You can also view the source of this repository on GitHub on Gem5 resources to, to get more details about how the resource is actually built. So Gem5 resources website is basically, uh, has basically everything you need to search resources and figure out what you can use them for and how they are built. So, so one important thing to note about resources is each resource is identified by its ID and a version. So each resource has a unique ID. And if we update the source of the resource, let's say we make a small change to a binary and recompile it, we'll update the version of it. So it will be referred by the same ID, but with a different version identifier. As we can see in this image, the RISC-V Ubuntu 20.04 boot workload has its three versions. And as you can see, there is a field called Gem5 versions. This field dictates that the, a specific version of the resource is tested to run on what release of Gem5. So version one of this workload will, uh, will run on Gem5 release 23.0, but versions two and three will run on 23.1 and 24.0 releases of Gem5. So how we can use Gem5 resources and simulations. So to do that, we use the function obtain resources. So let's do an example where we just get a hello world binary and run it on Gem5, run it using Gem5. So let's go to materials 0 to using Gem5, 0 to using Gem5 resources, and 0 one hello example.py. So the resource we want is the x86 hello64 static. So we can also directly search for it. So if I were to go to the website and say x86 hello, This is the resource that we want. So we can grab its ID. And so for this example, we have the board and everything set up. We just need to add the binary to our 
uh, to our config script. So we can do that by setting our board dot set se binary workload. So this is the function we call to run a binary in se mode. And now we can obtain the resource that we just grabbed. And that's, that's it. We can now directly just run. And this should directly just run the Hello World program, as we can see. So running single resources is pretty straightforward. But now, now let's talk about workloads. So workloads are what we, uh, what we can mainly use to run like proper programs. So workloads can be characterized as containing one or more resources with a preset, predefined parameters. So let's take a look at a workload. So on the screen, you can see this is an x86. And this is a workload for NPB, uh, integer, sort, uh, integer sort benchmark with size s. And this is specifically to run in SE mode. And that is the reason it just has one binary. As we can see, it specifies the function that should be run. That is a set SE binary workload that we just ran in our Hello World example. And it specifies the version and the ID of the binary that we would like to run. So, and it also has other details, like what ISA it is, what resource version, and what versions of GEM5 it will run with. All this information is available on the raw tab on GEM5 resources website, as we can see. Uh, this is available for every resource that, we, that you would like to search for. We can also take a look at a full system workload here. That is the x86 Ubuntu 24.04 boot with systemd. And this will boot Ubuntu 24.04 for our full system simulation. Here we can see we, have, we are using the Linux 5.4.0105 generic kernel and an x86 Ubuntu 24.04 image. Here we run a different function, that is a set kernel disk workload function, which we will talk about more later. And we also have a field called additional parameters, which in this field we can specify any extra parameters you would like, like a run script that if you would like to run after booting, or in our case, some kernel arguments. So let's talk about suites. So suites is a collection of workloads. So for an example of it would be the NPB suite, which has all the different benchmarks contained in, uh, in the benchmark suite. So with this, we can run like multiple workloads uh, parallelly using multiprocessing. We will talk about this uh, later. But basically, suites, you can say, is a collection of workloads. Um, all workloads in a suite will have something called input groups, which you can filter it by. Like Consider it as a tag, which you can use to like shorten down or filter the suite to get your desired workload if you would if you if you want to use a subsection of workloads in your simulations so let's do an example so in this example we'll use a suite we'll print all the workloads in a suite we'll filter the suite to get a specific workload using input groups and then we'll run that workload from the suite So the file will be uh, in 0 to gem5 resources, 0 to suite workload example.py. So this, this file has a board setup for us. Um, so let's first grab the suite. So I'm going to use the getting x86 getting started benchmark suite that we have on gem5 resources. So let's just obtain the getting started suite from the website. Mm -hmm. 
And now let's print all the workloads in the suite. So the suite class, like the suite resource class it's in itself is a generator. So you can just iterate through the suite to get all the workloads. So for workload in our getting started suite, let's print Let's print the ID, which we can directly get by workload dot get underscore ID function. Let's also print the resource version. Which we can get by the workloads dot get resource version function. And then let's just print a few lines so that we can separate uh, separate each workload. So let's just run uh, run this for now, and we can see that we uh, we can get all the uh, all the workloads in the suite. Here, as we can see, we get all the workloads that we have in this suite. This information is also like available on the website. Um, but yeah, um, let's, let's continue. So now, now let's print all the input groups. So this will print all the unique input groups that are there in the suite. So for that, we can just say print getting started suites or suite object dot get input groups. And if we run again, here as, as we can see, we get all the unique input groups that the suite has. So we can use this information to filter uh, the suite down to a specific number of workloads that we want. So now let's, let's run the IS benchmark, the integer sort benchmark that is uh, in the suite. So for that, we need the workload. So let's create a variable. Let's say NPPIS workload is equal to as, as the suite is a generator, I'm just casting it to a list so that we can directly just grab the first workload because the input group for this workload is unique. So when I'm going to pass this input group, it will only have one workload in it. So let's say getting started suite dot with input group function. And we use the input group is for the integer sort benchmark, and then we get the zeroth index. So this should get us the IS benchmark, and to double check, let's print it. So let's print workload ID. And now if we run our configuration script, we can see that we get the NPBIS uh, workload that we want. So now we can just directly run this workload by setting it to our board. So board.set workload. And then we just write NPBIS workload. And then we can set our simulator and we can run the simulation. Yep. Um, so I'll continue. So let's now talk about local resources. So local resources, when I refer to them as such, would be anything that is not on Gem5 resources. So you have your own 
resources that you have made and you would like to use it with gem5. So for that, you can create like a local JSON file, like, a, like looking similar to the RAWs I showed on the website. Um, and you can use that as your own like mock database or a mock data source. And to do that, you can use these environment variables before you run gem5. So setting the gem5 resource JSON environment variable will make it so that it's only your own JSON file that will act as a database. You can not grab any, it will override the part where we grab the resources from gem5 resources. And when you use gem5 resource JSON append, it will add your JSON file to as another data source. It will be like you can grab from gem5 resources and your own own gem5 and your own local resources. There are other ways which you in other ways in which you can define uh, the data sources. And for more information, I would recommend reading the documentation about defining local resources on uh, gem5 uh, gem5.org website. Um, but these are the two main ways in which if you have like a few resources that you would like to keep on using, you can just say have a JSON file and be whenever you want to use it, you can define its path and use it in your simulations. So uh, yeah, so there are two main ways in which you can use local resources. One is let's say you have a binary that you are not sure of, like you are still actively working on some resource and you might update it and keep it uh, like might change it or keep on updating it. You can directly create the resource object instead of using obtain resource, like binary resource or a workload resource object, and specify the local path directly to the local compiled binary or the local compiled disk image. And that way you can run the simulation. And another way, as I talked about, is creating a JSON file and then using obtain resource like we normally do with gem5 resources. So. Let's do an example for this. So for this, we will create a binary, compile a binary, and then run using the first method, and then second, create a JSON file, and then use that to run the binary itself. So in, zero to, uh, in material 0 to gem5, uh, this is gem5 source. In materials 0 to using gem5, 0 to gem5 resources, there should be a file called pattern.c. So this is a simple program which prints hello gem5 and then prints a simple, like a triangle pyramid pattern. So yeah. So let's compile this. So we can simply use GCC. Let's call our compiled binary pattern, and then we compile pattern.c. So now we have our local binary. So now first, let's run using the first method, like directly creating the resource object. So for, for that, we'll use uh, the 0, 3 run local resource uh, local path.py. Here we we can just create the binary. So binary is equal to, this time we'll use the binary resource. So this is a class uh, in the standard library under the resources directory where we define what each, like each category's class structure. So binary resource, workload resource, disk image resource, file resource, and so on. And then here we can specify the local path to be the path of this binary. So we can just copy path and paste it. So this will directly grab the binary and then run it. So let's try running the binary. And as we can see, it prints hello gem5 and then our small triangle pattern. So this we can use when our resource is in flux and we are using it for ourselves. Let's say we want to share resources with like someone we are collaborating with. The JSON way is much easier and consistent because you can directly just provide the JSON and then they can uh, use that JSON file directly instead of having to copy the binary and running them locally. 
So let's, I have created, like I have copied basically like the binary footprint from the raw tab um, from the website for the hello world binary that we used. And then made some simple additions like adding a description, adding an ID. So the two main things that we mainly care about is the URL. So if we are using a local file, like let's say we don't have it somewhere on like Google Cloud, so we have to use the prefix file colon slash slash, and then we can provide the full path for the binary. So, and then we need the MD5 sum of that file. So for that, we can just directly run MD5 sum on our Linux terminal with the file, and we'll get the MD5 sum. So this MD5 sum is used to verify that the URL is correct. If we have the URL somewhere on, like online, you can directly use that HTTPS link in the URL and that will also work. So we have specified the resource version, we have specified the Gem5 versions, and this file is not on Gem5 resources. So this is a unique file that is, that is present locally. So let's go to, let's run this JSON file. So let's go to 04 run, run local resource json.py. And here, same thing. We, all we need to do is add the binary because everything else is like set up. So here we, can, we just treat it as we are using Gem5 resources. So all we need to do is obtain the resource and go into our local JSON and get this ID. Oh, this is the wrong file. Here. Another thing to note is if you have multiple versions of the resource as shown above, you can also specify the resource version. Um, in our case, 1.0.0. Um, but this can be any number. If we don't specify the resource number, Gem5 will directly grab the latest version that is compatible with your current version of Gem5. So let's say you have a resource which has three versions. Version one and two are compatible with release 23.1, and version three is only compatible with release 24.0. So if you are running on release 23.1 and you say obtain resource that ID without specifying the version, it will get 2.0.0 because that is the latest version compatible with your current release of Gem5. Um, so yeah, so let's now uh, run this. So to run this, we need to first set our environment variable. So let's do gem5 resource JSON append, and then path to local resources or JSON. In our case, it is the current path. And then gem5, 0, 04. And as we can see, here also our local binary is being run. So this is a way where, in which you can use your own local resources to run with opt-in resources.